That means we're on. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, if anyone's here. I don't even know if anyone's here. I don't even know if anyone's here. Then they start popping up. Look, look at all the people joining us. Or is that the time? <clears throat> so Facebook Live doesn't show you how many people are there. Um, Hello everyone. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, let us know if there's any problem with audio. Um, We're just doing things a little bit different this week with Facebook rather than YouTube and making sure it all works. So, this is your 10th broadcast. Cool. Um, oh, we've got six people. Hey, people. Um, let us know in the comments, because we're using our external mic. It's a microphone. Um, let us know if, hey, Leone, are you getting any audio at all, Leone, or is this thing not working on Facebook Live? Give us a yes or a no. <laughs> you say can't hear you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is this working? The number of people watching your video is increasing. That's a good idea. Um, Someone will tell us. Someone will tell us. Though. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, oh, sound cool. good. Sylvia, Leone, thank you. Good awesome. Good. I'm just seeing if we can get the pro the comments up on the phone so, Hi, we don't, guys. so we don't have to go like that. <laughs> hey, Kat. Hey, Emily. Hey, Sylvia. So, people, what's the video quality like, firstly, and the audio? The audio should be good because we've got this. You like showing it off. That's my toy. <laughs> um, so that's good, but what's the, the what's the video like? Is the video, hey Robbie, is the video better quality than the fairly miserable quality of YouTube last week? I wonder if there's a delay. There might be. Oh good, loud and clear. Thanks Lynn. Excellent. Um, so this is us, Dan <laughs> and Lisa. Just regular Joe Blow. I know. Well maybe this is the first time I can actually see it because the last couple of weeks it's been YouTube. I actually wanted to do YouTube live, but there's no point if oh, the good. video is going to be excellent. So there's no point if the audio is going to be rubbish, you know. So, um, are you able to read the comments, yeah. right? Yeah, I can. Okay, we'll just go about that. I don't know why they're not coming up on the phone. So, hope everyone's well. We've got 25, 24 people joining us. Um, so maybe my spreading of the word. You yeah. want to wait? Just wait a moment. Wait till there's more yeah, people. We won't reveal the, the the big news yet. We're currently at my sister's place in Paran. Um, in Melbourne? We're staying here the night just to be in Melbourne because we've got an early start in the morning. What are we doing tomorrow morning? Uh, Darren's being interviewed at the ABC radio station. Yeah, so I've got a... <laughs> normally for radio interviews... I'll be there, but I'm not going to be talking. Well, normally for radio interviews, it's like five minutes over the phone and they contacted me months ago and they said, we want to do an interview. I said, that's fine. I'm assuming over the phone. No, we want you in the studio. Why is it in the studio? Because we want you in there for a full half hour, not just a normal three minute, four minute fluff piece. But <coughs> not that they call it the fluff piece. But um, so we're doing that from 8.30 to 9am on ABC Radio with Hilary Harper on the Saturday morning show. So tomorrow morning, guys, live. <coughs> is it live? Yeah, it's live. Oh, okay. They'll have a delay, I guarantee they'll have a delay. Um, hi, Robin. So, hey, Robin. So... Yeah, talking about the changing face of Australian real estate and tiny houses as one of the options. There's going to be a couple other guest speakers uh, over the I phone. I think calling in over the phone. Yeah. So um, one from Archie Centre and a small house designer apparently. Yeah. yeah. So that should be fun. Uh, we are going to video it. We were hoping to do a Facebook Live thing, the live broadcast from the studio, but the producer said, uh, that might cause some interference. We said that's fine, so we'll just do a recording and we'll upload upload it later. Just looking at your comments, so thank you for joining us for a start. So. Yeah, so if our eyes divert down to the corner here, we're just checking out what you're saying about us and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think we might stick with this Facebook Live thing. Also, the setup is just a lot simpler. Yeah, it is, isn't it? If you guys saw the photo that Lisa put up last time. <laughs> We yeah, had, but we were doing two. We were streaming live on YouTube and Facebook yeah, at the so same time. So that's why that which, setup was a bit over the top. Yeah, this is easy. We just got the laptop. I've actually got my my Kickass webcam, but that just didn't seem to work. I'll have to speak to Card about that. Um, also, yeah. So those who don't know or didn't see the announcement, we've got a new moderator, Card. Yeah, um, also known as the Nasty Bastard on YouTube. Um, or Coffee Cart. Coffee Cart. Yeah, so long-term um, member of the group. Um, Interestingly, he 
we realised today, Cart and me, that because um, we've been talking about making Carter a moderator for a little while, and he finally satisfied us <laughs> that he was of the quality that we need. And um, so we made him a moderator yesterday, and as it was, as it happened today, is the third anniversary of us becoming mates on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook mates. Coincidence. So, so he's been with us for with me for a long time. Um, Lisa's got to know Carter as well. We still haven't met met the guy. He looks no, like he's sad. Up in, he's up in Queensland or down in Victoria. As yeah, well. he just doesn't like us enough to come down. But that's the beauty of um, technology. Yeah. We get to know each other online. Yeah, that's, that's how it. we met. Yeah. Well, most people know the story, but yeah, we no, met. No, you don't. <laughs> no, I won't, I'm not going to tell them. It's fine. But yeah, he tells so it every week you'll get sick of hearing. The it. idea is for these sessions, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, is not only for you guys to get to know us and see what bullshit we talk about, but there is no agenda. We'll talk about anything and everything. If we've got some news to tell, which we do have, which but we'll, we do, we'll, we'll give it a bit. Do you reckon I'll get emotional? Yes, yeah. he'll get emotional if I just step out to the side. I'll compose myself. Um, so it's a chance for us to sort of share any news, to answer any questions you guys might have, um, and hopefully you guys can let get a bit of an idea of who we are. Again, any questions, ask away. Yeah. We might not be able to get to all the questions, but we'll give it a go. Yeah, Carter says I've got a great face for radio. <laughs> yeah. Why do we? Why do we add him again as a moderator? Because <laughs> he likes to hang shit on you. Yeah. So. Cheers. Cheers all if you got a beverage of choice on a Friday night. No. So um, the other reason I wanted oh, to yeah. do... The what? other thing we're doing after the interview is we're heading up to Mount yeah. Fuller. Also known as an undisclosed location somewhere in Victoria that I was going to say. Oh, but... sorry. It's a big place. Yeah. Up around that. It's a big mountain. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, so there's a bloke that we tracked down on Instagram and Facebook some months ago, and he has built a ten and a half metre long tiny house. And I'm talking a serious Did tiny house. Monica. Hey guys. So this guy is a Kiwi like me. So <laughs> Kiwi ingenuity. Um, he's built a ten metre long house. <coughs> ten and a half metres long, long I think. Yeah. And, Mine, uh, Darren, he's got a bit of a cough. <coughs> he's yeah. had it for a good week now. Ah, stupid. Um, so yeah, ten and a half meter long tiny house. He built it for himself as his own living tiny li house. His own house for him and his wife. But due to uh, family situations, he's probably going to have to move back to New Zealand. So he's it is actually going to be for sale. If people want to pay the price that he's going to be asking for it, we'll reveal that when we interview him. But in the meantime, until it sells, or in, if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, he's going to uh, plonk it up at this undisclosed location, and rented out on Airbnb. So it's a big tiny house, 10 and a half meters long, two lofts, full kitchen, full bathroom. His name's Carl. We're going to go meet up with him tomorrow, what, about one, two o'clock? Yeah, we so we're heading up to um, to that general direction uh, in the afternoon. We're going to do an interview with him because I want to find out a bit more about, as, as you know, hopefully you guys know, we want to dig a little bit when we meet people and interview people. We want to find out, you know, how we can do find out about tiny houses, why he wanted to do this. A bit about the build, how, I mean, this is a ten and a half metre long tiny house and I'm concerned about keeping my nine metre one under um, four and a half and he, he believes he's is under four and a half and if he can do it, hey, Emily. that's good news for us. So. And I asked him, I said, how big is this vast? How, how big is this vast in way? And he said, I haven't um, taken it over a Weybridge, but he's really confident that it's well under four tonne. Yeah. And the photos we've seen, it looks really nice too. Yeah. So I want to know how he's got it. He's had a chat to me about how he's managed to get it so light. Um, it's not a traditional build form. But we'll reveal that. We'll reveal that. But, in the um, yeah. yeah. So we're going to check that out. But he reckons it's, it's solid. Solid as a rock. He towed it up to... Solid. Solid. Uh, so you're, over, you're quite happy to sing in front of, you know, 30, sing. 40 odd strangers. I have this unusual thing that a song will pop into my head and I just have to... That you won't get up on stage or you won't get on live radio tomorrow. Yeah. No, I, I, get actually, my, I get words wrong. I get all <coughs> I did get her up on stage at the yeah, Sydney... you said this story. At the Melbourne yeah, Home Show. Melbourne Home Show. Yeah, Melbourne Home Show. 
And I said, just come and stand up here. So she went up the stairs. I can dance. She turned around. She said, no, I'm not doing it. No, sorry. I can dance on stage, but I can't. Um, so anyway, so that's the news. We've got a radio interview tomorrow. That's Hence, not the news. No, no. That's just yeah, some, some news. <laughs> so we're on the radio tomorrow morning, 8.30 till 9. Um, we will be recording it, but, you know, tune in. Um, there'll be a link. I'm sure they'll do a download afterwards of the thing. And then off to Mount Buller. Um, it's just going to be a flying visit one night tomorrow in Mount Buller, but we are going to go back in two weeks' time to have a proper weekend yeah, away. Yeah, just stay in it for a couple of nights. Yeah, so we're going to be the it's first a bit of people... A we're going to be the first people to we stay. Need our holiday, yay. Yeah. So we're going to be the first people to stay in this tiny house, apart from Carl himself. And so he wants us to, to test it out every which way, but Tuesday, and make sure everything works and um, don't break anything. And uh, so we'll be able to do the tiny house experience as well. And it will be available on Airbnb as soon as he's got it finished. But from what we've seen, he's got a hammock set up outside. He's got a fire pit. He's got fire river. No. By a river, he's, yeah, he's got a set up. Very picturesque. Yeah. So this news that we've got, basically we were approached. He's already getting emotional. No, you do, well, you do it then. You tell us, no, I'll just suck on the wine. You? <laughs> you do it. No, you do it. You tell him. Rob, Robbie's going, just get on with it. Um, okay, okay so first of all, uh, Rob. Uh, Robbie Russo, who's there, he's joined us tonight. Yeah, thank you to Robbie because he... He put this guy on to us and we we are very grateful. It, it's an amazing opportunity. Um, it's a win, win, win. It's a win for this guy, it's a win for us and it's certainly a win for the community. So go on, you tell them the news. Um, just for who are, uh, what radio station, ABC Radio uh, tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's Radio National, but ABC tomorrow. Radio tomorrow morning. Hi, Christine. Um, Just in <coughs> Hey, Christine. We haven't announced the news yet. We're about to. <coughs> so anyway, this guy approached us. He said, hey, uh, I want to talk to you about, you know, the industry. I've got some land. So in a nutshell, this guy's got some land. <coughs> some land. <laughs> yeah. He's got a whole stack of land. Um, and we have been... Uh, Thank you, Robbie. So <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. So we've been approached to uh, help him maximise the returns from this land. So he's going to be doing, he's going to have horse adjustment on this land. He's going to be doing camping, glamping. Um, but he's looking at us to help him manage, yeah. manage, is, it, manage the, um, I'm Robbie's wife, get tired of land, Alex. No. <laughs> oh, a tiny bit of land, Alex. Yeah, hey, just Linda. A bit of, bit of, just a bit of a tiny. Yeah, for those, we're not going to reveal the exact amount, but it's, it's yeah. hundreds of acres. Anyway. Um, so, no, it, that could be 200, it could be 1800, you never, it, anyway, it's, it's, it's a significant block amount of land. of land. You could get lost on the land for days. Anyway, so he approached us and so he wants us to help him maximise the return on this property because it's a sizable property. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be releasing spots for people to live on their tiny house here in Victoria. So... If you have a tiny house and you are looking for a space to live, we probably have got you covered. Um, we won't reveal too many details at this point, but the land is within 10 minutes of a metropolitan train station. It's in the northwestern section of, of Melbourne. So if you live in the western suburbs, you can get to work in 20 minutes. No. So 10 minutes from a station. About 35, 40 minutes to the CBD. On a train, yeah. It's, you um, still feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. It's yeah. still in the country. Beautiful, yeah. picturesque property. That's it. So there's... Now, this is not only Hi, open... Hi, Vicky. Hey, Vicky. So this is not only going to be open to people that have a tiny house. Uh, over time, there's going to be on-grid on, on spots and off-grid spots. The property does have electricity and it does have water but not everywhere in the property, obviously. So initially we're opening up spots. Now, these spots will be available from the first week of September. Okay, so we just want to get expressions of interest at this point. Uh, Lisa and I are going to be managing the tiny house side of things. So if anyone's interested, you can email us with your expression of interest. So initially we're going to roll out the off-grid sites. So to qualify for an off-grid site, you need to have a tiny house, obviously. And okay, so we've got a couple of people. Great news, sadly, on the wrong side of Vic for me. Oh, 
That's a shame. Well, we're working on another project which we won't reveal yet, which might help out people in other parts of Victoria and other parts of the country as well. So Okay, so Victor's, we'll just quickly say, Helen, we just announced the news. Um, there's basically going to be a tiny house community developing um, as of this of the 1st of September. Yeah, so we're going to be on-site managing it. Um, we are going to be looking after it and you know keeping an eye on keeping an eye managing all the tiny house residents. So over time, there's going to be tiny houses, um, people that live in their tiny houses permanently there. There's going to be Airbnb type rentals as well that we're going to be looking after. There's also going to be spots where people can rent to build their tiny house on site as well. Um, That's is, later down the track. Yeah. We're still working on the infrastructure for, for a lot of the things. Yeah. At first, we're just looking for those who are going to be set up off grid. Um, and then down the track, there's going to be um, services available for those who want to be connected. Yeah, there's 3G all over the property. Uh, as far as broadband internet, not everywhere as yet, but there's probably going to be a central hub where if you live on the property and you want to do some work, you get your laptop, go to the central hub building yeah because there's buildings on there. yeah there's so going to be communal kitchen communal yeah. bathroom so this is not some scrubby block of bush way out in the boondocks this is very well set up yeah and yeah. there's a lot of work to be done in the process um yeah but we're excited um we're very thankful and grateful to, for the opportunity to not only for us but to give this guidance to you, yeah. for those who are looking for land and, and wanting a community. <coughs> um, it's all a lot of you guys could ever hope for. Um, yes, it's only in the one location. Unfortunately, it's not going to be for everyone. But we can use this as a bit of a pilot as well. And, yeah. and other we can then approach other landowners with a similar model. I'm not saying that all landowners, landowners have that much land, but um, yeah. we can do it on a smaller there, scale. There is... Um, other developments, future projects and stuff, but that again, that's down the track initially. It's just to get um, some tiny houses on board. Yeah. Um, so initially, you need to be we're looking at the off grid positions first. And as I said, this is not a situation where you're going to have one bloke here and another one 12 to your feet to your left, another one. You're going to have, you're going to have a lot of space between. Um, so, well, anyway. So the point is, I just had too much wine. Um, so the point is you need to be off grid or have a place that will be off grid by the time September comes, uh, including things like a composting toilet, solar panels. Um, there will be access to water, but you need to be pretty self-sufficient. So onboard water tank, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. <coughs> with regards to price. Have a drink, Dan. <coughs> with regards to price at the moment, we're looking at around about $150 a week. Now, as I said, we've, we've seen a lot of people um, that are paying $100 a week to be in someone's backyard. This is an enormous opportunity. Um, Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. How are you doing? We're talking about Jack today. Yes. So, yeah, so it's an exciting opportunity. Um, oh, one of the other conditions of, because we've been talking to the landowner about, because he said, look, you come up with the rules, uh, because there is going to be rules in a community, because like in any community, there's going to there's be rules. Of course there's rules in every community, <laughs> including ours. Wait house. for it, we'll cop, we'll cop the flack here. Yeah, but anyway, um, so yeah, you need to be off grid, uh, $150 a week-ish at, at this point. Um, thanks, Tracy. And you need to also be willing to contribute volunteer sometime towards a communal garden, because they are, there is going to be a communal garden there as well, of which you can share the produce that that generates. And one that we also are thinking of making a condition as well, that you need to be willing to open up your house to the public four times a year, four days. We're going to have four open days a year where the public can come in and you need to be willing to open your house and say, hey, this is my house and talk to people and show them your house and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. So uh, hopefully that's not a sticking point for, uh, for people. I think it's a great opportunity because it means that not only the general public can come in and have a look at your, your house, but it means that you guys that are living there can go check out all your neighbours' houses as well. Not only that, um, for me personally, I'm going to be opening up my tiny house to the public anyway. Um, I want to encourage more people yeah. to join the tiny house movement and just say you can do it. You know, If I can do it, you can do it. Um, they can ask questions and... 
yeah. hopefully we can answer it. Yeah. There's also a scope where we're, we're planning yeah. on doing workshops and things on the premises, all sorts of workshops and, yeah, and, and that's, things, but that's down the track. Yeah. First things first is that getting a few, <coughs> tiny, few tiny houses in, uh, start a little bit of a community and take it from there. So that's the news. That's it. It's a start for the future, it seems, it Jack. So, it um, yeah, so it's all going to be um, Siobhan's great stuff. I was just thinking the other day that a tiny house community would be great in Victoria. Yeah. yeah, look, it's a matter of, I mean, as I said, we want to have people that are, that understand and get the whole tiny house uh, philosophy and community. The guy behind it just basically generous as far as I'm concerned. Um, he only came across the tiny house concept not that long ago yeah. and he just thought it would be perfect to utilise this land for that purpose. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be holding this land for a long time and he wants to maximise, as any investor would, he wants to maximise the use out of the land. Yeah. And uh, so it's... Yeah, there's going to be other aspects to the land, not just tiny houses. There's like going to be horses out there and... Yeah, look, we're talking horses, you know, Farmers markets, different things, festivals. Yeah. But he's, um, he's got um, other people sort of taking care of that side of things. Yeah. He, he's just asked us to come on board and manage the tiny house. If you've got a horse, people. if you've got a tiny house and a horse, or you want a horse, get a horse. You can <laughs> adjust your horse in the neighbouring field. So, yeah, that's the big news. So, um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, feel still, free to... We're still in awe. We only just found... We knew about the guy. He contacted us, what, a couple of weeks ago and then we knew we were going to go meet up with him and check out his land and we were like, oh, I wonder why he wants to chat with us about the land or what he's, <coughs> like, what he's got in mind. And it wasn't until we met up with him and he... Yeah, you're kind of, what are we going out here for again? Oh. And he took us out in, and drove us around the property and, and we were just brainstorming. He asked us, you know, what do you see? What do you think you could do? Yeah. What, How could we utilise this land in terms of tiny yeah. houses? And it's like... Yeah, and he's he's not one of these guys that's going to be mucking around. We met him yesterday. We saw the property yesterday. He rang me today and he said, "Right, so what are we going to do? Let's get it going. Should we make the announcement? Let's make the announcement." All right, uh, so John. We'll so northwest of yeah, just it's, outside of Melbourne. It's beyond Melton in the Brisbane Ranges, uh, Beckers Marsh, Toolan Vale sort Brisbane. of area. The Brisbane Ranges about oh, there. Is that what? Yeah, that's what it's called. Not that far. Not that far. <laughs> Out toward, yeah, past Mel Melton, Toolan Vale, out sort of that general direction. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's probably by car, 40 minutes by car on the free on the corner freeway uh, into the city. As I said, 10 minutes to a train station, 10 minutes to a, a major shopping centre. Yeah. Um, nice so it's, and yet, when you're there on the property, you feel like you're out a million miles away in the bush. That is so much closer to Melbourne than Kyneton. <laughs> I'm doing like a thousand kilometres a week in driving at the moment. But anyway, <coughs> so that's the news. So um, we've got other projects on, uh, not involved with this particular project. We've got other projects that we're talking to people about uh, that will be revealed in due course. Um, but yeah, lots of things happening. So if you guys are interested, if you happen to be watching this announcement, this is going to stay up in the um, yeah. on the page, but we're also going to upload it to YouTube later, so it'll, it'll yeah. remain there. And anyone who has questions or wants to contact us, Thanks, contact Marissa. us. It's at what is it? Info at tinyhousesaustralia dot com. Do I see a tiny house wedding? You're smart ass, isn't you, Carter? Do I see a tiny house wedding in your future? Hey, uh, we, we talked about a chapel, didn't we? Yeah, we might actually build a tiny house chapel. Not that we're religious. Not for us, just... Yeah. We have a tiny house chapel that we can do photo shoots. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of opportunity. It's got you scope, an studio so... To run your art classes from. Oh, it, it's a, it'd be a great hub for all things tiny houses, but also permaculture yeah, workshops. a creative environmental learning yeah. hub. Yeah. So Sometimes in the centre. Just right. have tiny houses Australia on the gate. <laughs> we need to get to know Alex a bit better before we <laughs> ask him that. But anyway, so yeah, so lots of opportunities yeah. there. And we're now. Thinking... I've never seen Darren lost for words until yesterday. <laughs> I was doing all the talking, and we went and had coffee afterwards, and I was doing a bit of brainstorming with him, and Darren just. It was internalising everything, I think. Putting live music in the chapel would be an awesome idea. Yeah, we could Look, do it. there's a big area for uh, seminars as well. Do so. a little stage. 
Oh, look, there's a function room. There's a there's a yeah. pool. Oh, no, don't look at the pool. Yeah, there's a pool. Shh, don't say that. Yeah, but that, again, the, it's an old sort of developed place that needs to be yeah, there's a lot of up. There's a lot of infrastructure, but there's there's buildings, there's sheds, there's... Um, Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> <coughs> there's going to be a... Uh, hey, Cheryl. So there's, there's a pool that's, that's going to be renovated. There's communal bathrooms, communal kitchens. So if you do want to kick up, kick up a storm, cook up a storm, there's communal bathrooms, um, meeting places. Yeah, you, but you can also go out and just get lost and be totally by yourself with the, uh, the snakes. Um, so, <laughs> the I don't know. I'm just, it's, it's, a, it's Australia. There, there is a bit of a, a stream or a river. There's a creek or a river or something. So there's yeah. going to be some spots... That are obviously more accessible for tiny houses than others because tiny houses are big and they're heavy. So there's going to be we're going to work with the guy. There's going to be some sections that are going to be like horse horse adjustment, camping, long term residence, Airbnb, that sort of thing. Um, uh, we talked about fifty, possibly even more. Oh, look, there's a room for a hundred prop, hundred tiny houses there, on this there, property, and you'd hardly even see. There's each room. <laughs> yes. And still have your privacy. Yeah. So. So lots of things going on. Uh, how many types of how, tiny houses will there be? Yeah, as I said, we're going to start off with, look, 20 to 50. We um, often do, and uh, I often do think about helping uh, with the homeless. <coughs> I mean, I've been in that situation myself, so. Yeah. Well, being on this land, one of the things, because on this it's land. It's just that, um, you know, that ta it's, it, that takes a lot. I mean, that would be like a crown crowdfunding campaign right there, I think. Yeah. The good thing about this property but, is that we're going to be able to do our workshops from there and we're also going to be able to do working bees from there as well. And the fact is that at $150 a week rent, I don't yes, know... Yes, we're building there as well. <laughs> yeah. So, I, we we moved out to Kyneton to build in our backyard where we moved to. Yeah. We weren't planning on living in the tiny house there just to build and then we were going to work out, oh, okay, let's start looking for where we're going to live. Yeah. But now this opportunity has come our way yeah. and it's like, well, we may as well just go back to the caravan, live in the caravan while we build. Oh, God. And <laughs> yeah, okay. that's where we'll stay, hopefully. So. Yeah. So, as I said, we'll probably get first dibs on building like building on there, whereas initially the, the spots that are available are for people that have a completed tiny house. It doesn't need to be a tiny house on, well, it does need to be a tiny house on wheels. I could uh, almost swing you around. It doesn't need to be a tiny house on wheels. You could learn to drive on it. Anyway, um, we, it doesn't have to be a tiny house on a trailer, but I guess you could do a yurt situation. We'll have to speak to the landowner. Um, you could have a house bus if you've got a caravan and you want to live out of your caravan. I'm sure he's open to that. Um, there's going to be facilities there on the premises to store, like caravan storage or tiny house. If you need to store your tiny house and you're going overseas yeah, for a couple of Yeah, so there's of, longevity. Um, we're just looking at different ways to help. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say was being on the property that lends itself to doing things like working bees to create home. But in terms of helping the homeless, I mean, or people that are on I mean, low incomes. I mean, this thing, you need land to be able to build these things. Yeah. And that's what... Darren and I like we don't have land and yeah. as much as we'd love to have land to yeah. do workshops um, then this opportunity came up and yeah yeah but we, I mean $150 a week I mean I don't know anywhere in, in Melbourne where you can get rent for $150 a week for, for a, a family no. but so, what I was just going to say with the homeless like it's something that you could actually build shelters for where, where those shelters go where um how that all works, we're not sure that's something. Yeah, that's right. I don't so. know the answer for that, but we could, we'd love to help out in that, that way somehow. Uh, Helen, would we get a discount for building our three out there? I'm sure if, if people, because most people are going to bring their one house, not everyone's going to be greedy like Helen with three houses. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure we, we can... say discount for building. Yeah, I don't know. We can, we're can. we not sure what the rates are going to be, the leasing rates for building. Um, there's not going to be any like locking in for 12-month lease I mean, it'll probably be a month by month thing. There will be a, an agreement in writing. We haven't talked about um, pets. We haven't gone into the uh, finer details yet. We only just met the guy yesterday. We only just looked at the land yesterday. He just wanted to get the conversation started. Um, yeah. And we. Are we okay, back? We're back. 
It said due to poor wireless connection. We're, at, we're in Paran. We're, we're at Sonia's place and it's connected up to a Wi-Fi. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, we've only just started the conversation, but we don't know. We're talking with the landowner about sort of $150 a week for live on the property. Yeah. And as I said, when people so see... So this is just new. Uh, he, yeah. And he gave us the go-ahead to announce it today just because come September... We, we want to have... We go, yeah, let's the go. go button and we're on it. Yeah. Um, so we haven't even discussed. What... Yeah, there's water there, Brian. Yeah, oh, there's plenty of water. Water, power, um, but there's some infrastructure they're working on. So um, to begin with, it's going to be um, off-grid living for those who come on first. Yeah. Um, and then once that's all set up properly, then there's going to be, yeah, you can Yeah, connect. the on-grid. And I'm not sure whether the on-grid... The on-grid might be the same price because at the end of the day, the on-grid people are going to be using electricity and water and all that sort of stuff, whereas the off-grid people won't be. So, yeah, we, we, so we, haven't nutted out, this... we haven't nutted out the finer details. This is all, like I said, it's all brand new. It's all exciting. Yeah. We're excited. Might end up being the same <laughs> price. We don't know what the price we're looking at for um, have a spot to build your tiny house, but there's plenty of spots. There's undercover open in the open spots. There's plenty of spots to build. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of potential. You've got a horse, bring your horse. I mean, you could even probably have your horse tied up to your house in, in, in particular spots. So. Uh, it's not an old caravan park. Do, it's um, We can't really say at this point, but yeah. it's a large land holding uh, with a lot of and infrastructure. And it's, it's so much better than a caravan park. <laughs> yeah. Caravan <laughs> parks. I mean, personally, I know that there's there's people out there trying to convert caravan parks into tiny house villages where you've got house, 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 like a Chesden car park. Um, no, this is going to, you're going to have <coughs> space, you're going to have privacy. And we're not talking like 20 or 30 metres between houses. We're talking hundreds of metres behind between yeah. houses. But again, it's just brainstorming. We're going to sit down with this guy and, and nut down a proper plan. And yeah. But I mean, if there's if there's friends, for example, and this, I've just thought of this, if there's, if there's friends that, you want to be really close. You've got family members and you want to have two or three tiny houses and a bit of a corral, a bit of a circle right next to each other in a little group. I mean, that's totally feasible as well. Yeah. Um, it's not like, no, no, you have to be there and your best friends have to be way over there. Um, not at no, all. If you want to be closer to each other, there's, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, if you want to have two houses like that with a deck between to have a bigger house, if you're a, a family or growing family, then do it. I've always said that's a great option. Yeah. So... What else is yeah. going on? So that's the news. We're still digesting it all ourselves, guys. It's it's a wonderful opportunity. Again, not only for us, but to be able to offer something like that to the yeah. community. It just it's all we could ask for, really, isn't mm. it? Yeah. So. And again, thanks, Robbie. Uh, Robbie Russo uh, put this guy on to us, and maybe a TV channel would want to do a show about it. Uh, possibly. Um... Yeah. Discount for off rings Brian houses. says discount for off grid. I hope. Look, probably we, not. It's probably going to be the we, same we, price. We, as we did discuss it. We talked about that. <coughs> anything's possible at this stage. Yeah. We, we haven't really met at the yeah. drawing board and, and finalised everything yet. And but, some people yeah. might be thinking, oh, one hundred and fifty dollars. That's a bit steep. But when people understand what's on the property and the location, it's and, a ten minute drive to the nearest train station. Yeah. There's. And it's only. Yeah. A, 45 minute drive into the city. Yeah, the, the amount of this is, as I said, this is not just a block of empty vacant land out in, in the bush somewhere. There's a lot of existing infrastructure, there's buildings, halls, um, a lot of infrastructure there uh, because of what the land was used for. So when people fully understand what's there and what's going to be happening as we roll out the different parts of the, the plan and the vision that the owner of the land has, um, I think $150 is, you know. Well, we were paying what seventy dollars we in the paying, driveway. Yeah, we were in paying. <laughs> we were paying seventy dollars, and if Rob ever sees this, Rob, thank you very much. We do appreciate it, but we didn't have a lot of privacy. You know that. Um, <laughs> we're in a driveway. Like, we're in Rob's driveway past, for, past, for twelve months in Murrumbina, and we were paying like essentially seventy. It came out to about seventy dollars a week, um, and that was fine, and that helped us save a good huge amount of rent. Um, <laughs> But the only <laughs> they sort of each other or office ends of the land. Yeah, maybe we can. We'll put Thanks, her Brian. in house. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're stoked. Um, I hope you guys are um, as excited about the news as we yeah. are. Um, 
yeah, so lots of options there. Um, I just think it'll be a good shove for the tiny house movement into the future. And yeah. I, think it's, I just think it's an amazing. Yeah, so as I said, there's going to there's going to be some rules, some basic criteria, and there's going to be. Um, there's, um, we talked about. Mm, I mean, there's going to be guidelines, and there will be something to sign, but it's not going to be a lease. Yeah, so but there'll be to something to sign to say yes, you agree to the rules, you agree to this much rent, which is going to be paid. Uh, as I said, we'll be overseeing and managing. But you know, if you give the, say um, like three months' notice, and, and yeah, you if you want to leave, leave you, can. you can leave. There'll be a so, minimum number amount of notice or whatever that you need to give. Um, but normal sort of stuff, you know, don't be a, don't be a dick, be, not, <laughs> be nice and be sociable and there'll be an application process, you'll need to be interviewed probably by us, we'll, we'll get to approve who we let in the gate, who, who we don't let in the gate. Um, I mean, it's going to be, I mean, everyone's welcome to yeah. put in an application, everyone's got fair, yeah. fair game and, and it's just a matter of... Um, who who builds one first and who... Well, it's just a matter of who's interested. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, I know that... And one of the downsides, I was talking to the, the landowner about this yesterday when we met him, with the whole tiny house thing, there's two main downsides that I can see as opposed to normal traditional housing. You don't get the, the capital gains that you do with a normal traditional house. But the flip side of that is you don't have that financial pressure of the mortgage hanging over your head every single month for the next 20, 30 years and knowing that you've got to go to the job that you probably don't like 30, 40, 50 hours a week. And if you lose that job, you're in big strife, right? Um, so that's one issue, one downside. But for some people, it's not really a downside, right? The other issue is that, yeah, if you want to do a tiny house thing at the moment in Australia, you're probably have, going to have to go somewhere like this, somewhere on the outskirts of the major cities, acreage property, do a deal with a farmer or a landowner, and yes, you might be spending a bit more time commuting. You might be spending an extra half hour, an hour in the car every day going to work. Um, you might be spending a bit more in fuel. But is it worth it? For a lot of people, it will be. Mm. Especially for the lifestyle and the, the peace and quiet that you've got. Mm. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, exciting times, says Robbie and uh, Emily. So, yeah, Victor, uh, Vicky, really exciting. Can't wait to hear the final plan. Wish I was going to be at that stage with you being part of it all. Well, Vicky, if you are in Victoria and you're not quite at the stage of having your tiny house done, as I said, we're going to start off with the people that want to live, that are, that are ready to go. I'm all, all set up. But there's going to but be... But that's just the beginning. Yeah, so. there's, there's going to be places where you can... I mean, Come and build. I mean, we're probably going to be living in the caravan while we build. Yeah. We'll also get to lock up stage. Yeah. The other interesting thing, we have done a bit of a swing around after speaking to Brian. Thank you, Brian, for confusing us again last night. Um, we spoke to one of, our, <laughs> one of our followers, Brian, who suggested that no nine meter trailer, four and a half, four point two ton weight rating. Yeah, of course you can get it under four point two ton with a timber frame. So we are now considering going back to a timber I was, frame. I was always wanting to do timber. Um, it was always going to be 75, 75? 70 by 35. 70 by 35. I was always going to do that. Yeah. And then what sold me on the steel frame was that they now do 70 by 35 steel, steel frame. Yeah. But then last night, um, right. I've changed my mind again because after talking to Brian, he said, with steel framing, you still need to brace it with plywood. Whereas with timber, you don't. So I it mean, kind of negates the, and the thing is, um that weight saving in the steel yeah. frame. And in the US, if you look at a lot of the US builds, we've all seen, you know, these massive heavy duty trailers, uh, and then they, they put the plywood over the over the trailer and they say, right, let's build the floor. Then they build essentially another wall and they build another floor and they insulate that. Then they put the, the final floor over the top of that. It's like another wall lying on the ground. But anyway, um, and they do yeah, everything so with two I, by fours. But, I flipped my mind again, I'm going back yeah. to timber framing. Yeah, so, but everything, two by fours. Was, but Brian was not the first. There's, there's multiple builders. Bevan Thomas from um, from Tiny House Christchurch in New Zealand, he's told us. Jack, mate, you've told us. Um, the other builders that we know, Adam, Andrew, uh, well, yeah. Lucas, several builders have told us that for a tiny house, you don't need to over-engineer it. You don't need to go, you know, two by four, there's four by six there. You and know. not everyone's insulating their floors either, and apparently you don't really need to. It's not really necessary. Yeah, and I know I've said this before, but when we went up to visit Grant from Designer Echo Tiny Homes, who happens to be having a open day on June the 10th? Oh, can I mention it, please? I just did. 
No, not that. But can I finish my point? Yeah. Yeah. So when we went up there, I said to him, do you reckon that in Australia, tiny house people need to have insulated floors? And he said, well, no. And someone else, not, not um, Grant, because he said, look, from, other, you know, from south coast of New South Wales, north, he said, no, I don't think you need to. You know. Can I ask the question about the bus tour or not? Uh, do what you want. I, I'm happy to do it. I just think people are not going to pay the price. Oh, we don't know what the price is going to be. So you'll be shocked. I was. So when is it? It's on the 10th of July. Yeah, for two hours, one till three p.m. Yeah, in Aladulla. Oh. <laughs> and I had this crazy idea that yeah. maybe I could organise a bus tour for those who are here in Victoria from Melbourne. It'll be an early start and a late late ending. It's 875 kilometres away. Yeah, but I think it's doable. Yeah. He's a naysayer. So what do you guys Hands reckon? up, he wants to spend <laughs> nine hours on a, on a bus for a two-hour look at some tiny houses and then nine hours back on a bus back the other way. It could be an overnight trip. We could break it up. But then that's even accommodation. It's so. even higher price. Well, see, Jan's saying yes, please. Good God. See, I'm happy to do it. I'd sit there for nine hours just... It's probably not even nine hours. Realistically, it's two days rental of a... 10 or 20 seat bus. But whoever probably comes with along, a driver, probably with the, a driver. the seats will cover the cost of it all. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm happy to get quotes. He just doesn't want it to come out of his pocket. That's what you're worried coming about. Out of my pocket. But anyway, <laughs> um, if we can do a 12... A wine bus. <laughs> if we do a 12 seat bus, then one of us could... I could oh, drive it, or one of us could drive it. Christine's got a 10 seater bus and was planning on going. There you go. Hello. Where there's a will, there's a way. you just got to put it out there in the universe. I keep saying. Yeah, but Christine always causes trouble. You know that. No, she doesn't. <laughs> joking, Christine. <coughs> <coughs> so I was thinking, up to a 12-seat bus, yeah, you can drive it on a normal license. Anything more than that, you're going to have to hire a driver. So, well, you, don't, you wouldn't need to. If you have drivers willing to take in turns, I can't. Yeah, but still, unless but you've got a heavy vehicle bus license. I haven't license. driven in over 10 years. No, that's right. I don't trust you. So... <laughs> Um, but if you got like a 20 seat bus, we're going to need a bus for like two days, a driver for two days. You know, if we, if we rented a bus ourselves, um, it's going to be two days higher. They give you like 200 kilometers free. So Christine, are you, have you got a 10 seat bus because you're going to, um, renovate it to live in it like for a tiny house setup, or? Or have you got eight children? <laughs> yeah. Or have you got it for other reasons? That's awesome. Eight I wouldn't children. mind having what, eight children? Bus. You don't want to have eight no, children? No, I don't want... No, no. no. It's a football team. <laughs> I've got one grown-up child. Overnight would be great for me. Um, look, we could... Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's the thing. The seats will, will, you know, will charge a certain amount to cover the cost of the petrol and yeah. whatever. The, and only reason, the only reason I thought, nah, it's not going to be any good for a, a I rental. I looked at V-Line. It's just ridiculous because you've got to get to Canberra or up to Sydney and then you've got to get... De- Get your way to Aladulla and yeah, it's just easier from going going from A to to B. Yeah, but the issue is if we go to something like budget and rent one of these things, it's, it's two days, you know, a couple of hundred dollars a day. They give you two hundred kilometers free, and then they pay you like then they charge like thirty three cents per kilometer for any additional. Exactly, so. you share in the driving, you share in the costs of the hire. Bob's your uncle. Your yeah, cat's my uncle. <laughs> anyway. Um, so we'll look into it, uh, and we'll talk to Christine. Send us a friend request, and we'll we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk, and we'll. It'd be good if we could get a, gu- a, a, a couple, a couple, a couple of buses. But is, then, has any other any other of you fellows got a ten seater bus? A council bus for two hundred dollars a day. I wonder if that include. Well, I guess surely they would have to. It would have to come a driver. driver for someone yeah. who maybe is someone in the community. And maybe I'm wrong, but I'm. And maybe I'm wrong, but I'm assuming then we have to pay some council worker penalty rates on a weekend for for two days. I just think it'd be a good day out, and I think we'd be able to keep ourselves occupied for nine hours on the bus. You know, talk tiny talk. Yeah, to talk to Grant for two hours. Right, everyone get back on the bus. And then... <laughs> so it's not like it's open days, like one or three. We might we might be able to. We talk. might all be a nightmare for him. <laughs> Yeah, we could possibly talk to Grant and say, you know, can we make it, you know, can you open the open day for a bit longer? But um, who knows? We'll, we'll think about it. But um, Well, we can't think of it, think about it for too long because it's on the 10th of July. If we're going to do it, we need to sort of... Well, maybe you can get some quotes on Monday while I'm at work. Well, we'll talk to Christine first. Mm. <laughs> Even and it's can... also going to be first in best dress, whoever pays up front first, you know, then... Even if we do 10... Um, 
fill up Christine's 10 seater bus and that will be for those 10 people. It's a lower cost obviously because there's no rental. Um, yeah, we can still share the driving well, and like he's, it is a caravan park that he's building on. So I wonder if there's scope to stay on the land, even if it means pitching tents. Yeah, he's, he's builds kind of on, on the back ass end of a, of a caravan park or next door. So, that's right. People know me. That's right. This is what it's all about. They get to know me. If they don't like it, they'll leave the group. But they'll find it offensive. <laughs> like that whole dance to do. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, the one that gave us a bad review. But that's what I was going to say. Again, as, as always, if you if you appreciate anything that we are trying to do here in terms of promoting the tiny house community. She's, now she's saying she's got two here. by ten seater, seaters available. Oh. We'll need a driver for the other. Of course, that's good. that wouldn't be hard to organise. Ah, uh, see, Christine forgot. Oh, yeah, I've got the other one. Yeah, I forgot. Well, there you go. All right. I guess it's happening then, isn't it? We'll have to talk to Grant. Um, we'll just let him know. We'll, we're coming. We'll have to we've talk, got, we've we'll have got to talk to Christine. We've got two buses full. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk to Christine about insurance, whether whether any of us that are covered for insurance. Yeah. I've never driven a 12-seat bus. I guess it's not that bad. So, yeah, we'll talk, Christine. We've towed, I've towed your nine-metre trailer. And the caravan. And the caravan with our wife in it. And, and Aussie's trailer. That's it. So, you um, got some experience. Yeah, that's true. People are going to be towing some trailers around the place. We've got, interestingly, we've got our last three trailer orders. We've got um, Roshan and Cassandra and Tanya that have all put deposits down on their trailers. And they're all from interstate. Um, two from Sydney, one from Byron Bay, and they're coming down to get their trailers. So, uh, so if any of you happen to see a Tiny Houses Australia trailer on the freeway at some interstate freeway, then uh, give it a bit, give it a hoot. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, pub crawl. <laughs> on the way back, maybe. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Uh, it's in it... July. No, it's not. Tenth of June. Oh yeah, sorry. Tenth of June. Sorry. Of June. Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry. So sorry. Away. Sorry. It's the tenth of June. Yeah. Normal driver license required. There you go. So as long as we're uh, as long as non-named people are covered in the insurance. So we were talking to this landowner, and he's like, you know, I've got crazy ideas, and I said to him, crazy ideas are the best. You are thinking the bus trip was a crazy idea. Not going to. No, happen. I just thought it was a crazy. It's doable. I thought it was a crazy idea if we had to go and pay four or five hundred bucks rental plus insurance plus a driver yeah, plus access case. You, you just put it out to the group. You know, if once we got quotes, look, is it feasible? Who's interested? If no one's interested, then you just don't do it. Are you going to talk about putting it out to the universe again? That thing. Well, it works. Yeah, maybe you never know. Let's see. <laughs> so, do you guys have any questions for us? Yeah, about trailers, about this land opportunity, about... Um, the bus tour, anything. Anything you want to ask us, ask anything you want us to ask. Is there anything... Tiny that, houses that we're going to meet tomorrow. Is there anything that you guys want to see Tiny Houses Australia doing that they're not currently doing? Um, or is there anything that you want us to do better? We're not, <laughs> we're not doing very well in. Um, let us know. We are planning on more Tiny House tours. Uh, we're connecting it with lots of people all over the place. Um, there's a guy that shall remain nameless that's in this conversation right now that is building a 30-foot tiny house in South Australia and he's about to start and when he gets a bit further into it we are going to go and see him so that's another tiny house in the making so, and it's going to be a lot of white stuff in it so that's right up my alley see Linda says we are in always the universe. Delivers. I'm going to hold Linda to that all right so and we are the universe we are you're gonna go I, i've been trying to drum it into him you're gonna go all zen on me we're gonna go we're gonna go and watch bob proctor after this bob proctor oh bob proctor. You know, you know, no i had one i've had well, i've had like three six yeah no i said i can't talk anyway is that why that's why know? i don't go on the radio no well, i get all tongue tied not everyone wants to be in a high scraper <laughs> One of those sky, sky rises. No, I, see, I told you after we did the tiny house talk with um, Michelle Boyle, what was her, what's that podcast called? Oh, the tiny, the I tiny think house I said, podcast. Uh, three tongue twisters in that one. No, anyway. Um, lessons on power tools. Yeah, when we get their workshops up and running, um, yeah. Carter wants the tiny house fridge. Well, that's a given. We're going to send you a shirt first. And a cap. Oh, jeez. Does he want a cap? 
Just I don't care. Caps? I don't care. I'm not like anyone. Oh, okay, fine. Um, Tony Frisbee, um, safety on the build site. Oh, Helen wants a Frisbee too. Oh, we'll get group discount. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. When, when we get our workshops going, we're not just talking about come and learn how to so build a tiny house workshop. So, Stephen, are you asking us if we have any or are you asking if we're going to have solar um, panel advice? On this property. Yeah, the whole off-grid solar panel stuff, solar system is, is something we need to get our heads around. Yeah, we, um, we're, we're, there's a guy in the group, I don't know whether, no, I don't think he's... There's a couple of people that we're going to be potentially working with around Australia in terms of, refer, you know, teaming up with because they know their stuff with regards to solar yeah, it's, systems. Yeah, that's what they do. Uh, Mike Hayden from 24 Hour Solar is in the group, so... He's based in Lismore. If you've got questions, tag um, him in the group if you've got any questions about solar. Yeah, tell him we sent you. Mike, be nice to us. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Mike Hayden. Yeah, we're sending them business. So, um, but yeah, so Mike knows his stuff with regards to solar. We are going um, to connect maybe, with like, people. If you want a shirt, send us an email, put in an order, and we can, um, we can order some shirts. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah, well, I mean, um, it's something we've been planning on doing, but all this other this, stuff has been happening. It's all reflected. I'm actually not on that. I'm not actually here. I'm over there. Anyway, yeah, it's all flipped it's, around. It's, it's weird. But yeah, these are embroidered. We got these embroidered. So we got a couple of polo shirts and t-shirts embroidered yeah, he for forgot the home to, show. He forgot to order ladies. I got one for her. He, no, he got four. I got a white and a navy. I got a white and a navy polo shirt and a white and a navy t-shirt. These are men's. I'm not a large enough room for your boobs and stuff. So no, the shoulders. Hang down. I just don't understand. Sleeves hang down. I'm not a lady, obviously. No, what? Are you sure? Yeah. So, but these are embroidered. So we do want to. Um, I know we'll probably cop a bit of flack for it, but we are going to launch the Tony Houses Australia online store. We have our key rings yeah. and the frisbee. That's. And it's, oh, God, we've we've been wanting to organise and... that since last year, but all this other stuff's been happening. Yeah, which, so... which is. Fine, so yeah. we're not sure whether to go with embroidered shirts or or printed oh, okay. t-shirts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but we can get a t-shirt. Um, twenty to twenty-five dollars for a, a t-shirt or polo shirt, uh, exactly like this, and we can order that. We just want to try and automate it so that we can hook up with a drop shipping company. So when you guys order, the company just sends it off to the you. The ones he's direct. been, we've been getting a local guy to do these ones, but we are looking at. Um, you know, drop shipping. And yeah, because we don't want to have to go get this or get him to send it to so us that at our house and then wrap it up and, and then we send, take it to the post if office. If you want one, you can just order it and it's, and and then it's get done. It. So. Yeah, so we'll do coffee mugs and frisbees. and Maybe we can do those kangaroo scrotum key ring things. Oh, no. No? No. Oh, I've seen those at the big market. I don't know why someone would want one. Honey, you need to be vegan. I am vegan. You struggle with vegan. Yeah, I know. What do you have to do? <laughs> We're struggling vegan. Anyway. <coughs> so. so. Any other questions? Uh, is it difficult to find land in the major cities like Melbourne and Adelaide? But unfortunately, um, Ashton, um, it's we would love there to be an easy answer where you could just go to like realestate.com and search and peruse the listings and go, no, no, oh, look. Look, honey, there's these four. Let's go look at these four on the weekend and we'll pick one. You just have to look at the movement. The whole tiny house thing you have to think out of the box. Yeah. It's it's not mainstream. Well, it's becoming mainstream. So it takes work. There's no one so place. It's there's... the same way as where you're going to um, park it. Again, you have to look outside the box. Yeah, it's it's, it's networking. It's who you know, someone that you know. Letterbox that knows drops. someone. Letterbox drops, old school. Gumtree, ads yeah. on Facebook. Law suggestment. Yeah. Um, and staying in gum tree, staying in, in our group. Um, so, so when opportunities come, you can jump on. Um, what else? Can I used to make key rings if you need help. Lovely, we'll speak to the owner. Um, oh, can coolers, that'd be right. <laughs> Donut cushions, there are stubby holders for cart. He needs a stubby no, holder. No, coffee cart. I don't think he needs to do a coffee. Tiny house. Stop it. Yeah, well, maybe we'll build a, a cafe, a tiny house cafe as part of a workshop. We'll take it up to Queensland and the cart can just run it. <laughs> and then you can eat a coffee cart. Yeah, we can, we can call it the coffee cart. Yeah. Um, so. no, so but anyway. We, we just ramble on here, guys. <laughs> lots of options, but um, 
Yeah, so we want to get the merchandise going. Uh, there's going to be Tiny House, as I said, on our website. It's, it's slow going at the moment, but when we do come across people that have got land available, we approach them and say, look, we'd love to work together with you. We're happy to promote you. Yeah. So having said that, uh, with our Tiny House listing section of our website, if any of you have land available, if you have got... Or even if you know people who have land, <coughs> and, and they might not have even it might not have even crossed their mind. Yeah. Maybe if you bring it up, they might go, "Oh, what a good idea!" And you don't have to have hundreds of acres, even if you've got one acre, and you got and you're happy to have a tiny house, you know, down the back corner of your your, your land, mm. um, at three, four, five hundred bucks a month, cash in hand, rent. Uh, let us know. We're happy to advertise that on our website, free of charge, and for the rest of the year. Mm. Um, and if you've got a tiny house on your property that you want to rent out, whether it's already on Airbnb, we can help promote the hell out of that, or whether you just want to rent it out yourself directly, then we can help promote that free of charge for the end of the year. If you've got a tiny house that's for sale, perhaps you've built one and for whatever reason life has changed and you need to sell it, we can help you sell that. And if you're a, finally, if you're a commercial tiny house builder, <laughs> and you're churning them out, then Sorry. we can talk to you about how we can work together with you there. Uh. <laughs> I'll do a gypsy, a gypsy, a gypsy wagon, wagon and, and call, call it, it the, the rum, rum barrel. barrel. We might do a gypsy wagon thing, that'd be cool. Um, but it was interesting, we spoke to, I mean, the thing is, you, need, you guys need to do your due diligence. I mean, we're doing our very best to make sure that we only recommend and endorse companies that are reputable and ethical um, there are people in the industry that we know to be dodgy, unethical, unprofessional. And as I've said before, if you come across a tiny house builder or a tiny house company that's out there advertising themselves as a tiny house company and you can't see any trace of them in the tiny houses Australia group, there's probably a reason. Well, that's not true because we're not, <coughs> we're not constantly promoting other companies anyway but that's not to no, say there's we don't endorse. Of them. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean so. if you do a search and and the tiny house company comes up well you know that you yeah know, i mean we're not going to name and shame the, the the people that we know to be dodgy we're just not going to acknowledge we're, their no. existence we're not going to give them any airtime because to be honest we don't want to deal with all the bullshit when they go when they start up as you fight oh that. look for an, i'm not going to name names here but for example um there is a builder out there causing trouble um not just with us, he caused trouble with the company, another company, and someone who worked for him. I've spoken to someone who was working for him, and it was just abusive phone calls, abusive yeah, text we, messages. We copped, we've copped his abuse as well. Yeah. So if you can imagine, if we promoted him... Yeah, if we said, oh, go to this the, guy, because it's simply, oh, he got, he's got a tiny house building company, he must be pretty good. Yeah, go no, to this guy. we're not going to promote him because he's just got a really bad attitude. And if you guys were ripped off, you'd come back and say, well, Jesus, you guys pointed me in the direction of this guy, and he's ripped me off. And he's cutting corners. He's cutting corners, doing dodgy shit. So, no, yeah. we're not doing that. The so. people that worked for him <coughs> were having a hard time wanting to tick it off. Yeah, they didn't want to be... Because so this guy true. was saying, no, nah, just cut corners, do it, I don't care. He, didn't, he didn't, just didn't care. Um, and so that's why, even though it might be slow going, we would much rather... <laughs> cut, but ask us in a private message and we'll let you know. <laughs> Bloody yes, we will. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but that's why I, I would rather go slower going and have fewer listings on the website. I'm not interested in saying and having a listing of... Every tiny house builder I could possibly track down on just Google to, in Australia. Just to get ahead of it. Just so I've got the most listings. No, we want to have quality listings here. And if, if in the next 12 months we've only got four listings, then f fair enough. As we come across new tiny house building companies or any tiny house related companies, we're going to reach out to them, see if they're ethical and professional and see if they're open to working with us, with being the, con you know, the key word. Because uh, I don't care how good you are. If you could be the most stunning, talented builder whatever in the country but if you've got a bad attitude and it's all about you mm. uh, and you don't care about your clients or working with us then we're not, we're not interested so mm. um, that's, what, that's networking yeah the other thing that we wanted to do i know it's heading into winter already but let's face it i mean whether it's now or whether it's in preparation for next winter if we were to do a deal a bulk deal with a oh, yeah. supplier of tiny wood stoves we're talking really tiny wood stoves that could easily heat up your tiny house is all you need uh, and you wouldn't have to give up like a square meter of space in your tiny house let us know if you'd be interested because we're speaking to a couple of companies in the US 
about getting a price for Australia and importing like a container load, you know, 10, 20, 30 at a time. Obviously, if we can get, if we do this, it would be a pre-sale situation. That's the one. <laughs> Yes. So um, we are talking. So yes, Robbie, we are talking to Cubic Wood Stoves, um, and we're talking to another couple of companies as well. But any of these sort of deals we put together, it would be a pre-sale thing. It might be okay. Yes, we're going to import it like thirty of them, but we need to get pre-sales for thirty. So you need to pay up front for thirty, and if we get thirty, it goes ahead. If we don't make the minimum number, then we'll just refund the money back to you guys. So. Uh, we're just working out prices and speaking to customs brokers. So we don't just we don't just sit on our ass and do nothing. All day you were on the phone, weren't you? Yeah. But then you could talk all day. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's slow going. Yeah. It's a lot of um, networking, communicating with lots yeah. of different individuals. And look, while I'm at it, I may as well. I'm going to ask as well. If any of you guys are builders, or if you know of any builders that are interested in the tiny house community and the movement and want to work with us especially here in Victoria, but not even Victoria. If, you got, if you're a builder or you know of a builder that's interested in working with Tiny Houses Australia in any of the states of Australia, we already we want to talk to you. We already know of a few, and Jack's one of them. Yeah, so we want to we talk. We haven't forgotten we, you, Jack. We haven't forgotten <laughs> you, Jack. We're going to be working with Jack. We want to be working with Adam, who's not here, but he's a builder in Melbourne. Um, a couple other lads that we met. Mitch and Josh show. that we met at the, the Melbourne Home Show. There's, there's a, few, a few people that want to get involved. Brian. Uh, Brian we spoke to last night. So we are serious okay. about getting things going. And we don't want to just have it Victorian based. This is why we want to sort of branch out and have them in New South Wales, in Queensland, yeah. South Australia and yeah. Yeah. The other news is whether Cut knows about it or not, we're going to be launching tiny house meetups in uh, the Brisbane and Gold Coast and sort of that region. So we're not sure where we're going to be doing them. Yeah, it's... WA. If you know any builders in WA, well we have connected up with um, one but yeah. Not the dodgy, not the dodgy bugger that closed his, <laughs> closed his page down. Um, um, he's probably a lovely guy, but he was probably just naive. And... Yeah, no, he's just that's not how you build a business. And yeah, you know, he was using for those of you that were around last week, there was a guy that set up a Facebook page, Tiny Spaces WA, using photos that didn't belong to him, and I knew that they didn't belong to him. We knew who their companies were. I contacted <laughs> the companies, two in Australia, one in actually China, Australia, and the UK. I US said, this bloke's as well. this bloke's using your images. We had no idea. <coughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, well, next weekend we're doing a meet-up in Bendigo. <coughs> Geelong's so, yeah, not a bad idea. Um, Geelong's probably a good one, yeah. Yeah, so Bendigo is, is next month, which is next weekend, the first Sunday of the yeah, month. Yeah, ne next weekend. Um, we're also going to try and start doing Facebook Live, even just like a little five-minute grab of, of our events and our meetups, just the Facebook Live thing, five minutes. Yeah. Um, just to let you guys That's know. a bit tricky because like the people that come to the meetups, they're not always wanting to be on camera. So you know, we yeah. we, are, we we do ask their permission. If they're not comfortable, we just don't pull the camera out. So. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, but yeah, Carteret's going to be our man on the ground. We are wanting to kick off Tiny Houses Australia meetups on, every month in the Gold Coast and Brisbane. If for, for the second possibly, time, we tried to do if it. the cart, if yeah. the cart, if the cart, <laughs> if the cart, if the cart can do it. Um, <laughs> You're the Daz, he's the cart. Yeah, that'd be right. So, but um, Carteret, just on that, if you can't do Sundays, then we'll, we can switch it around. But we want to have try and, we want to have monthly meetups. Possibly we might alternate one in Brisbane, next month Bris, Brisbane, Gold Coast, etc. Yeah. Um, depending on what's easiest for yeah. coffee car. Uh, but yeah, and if anyone is uh, wanting to be our man on the ground for Tiny Houses Australia meetups in other states, let us know because we want to have we tried the first six months of last year. We tried doing meetups around Australia because all these people were saying, "Oh, we want I wish there was meetups in Perth and Brisbane." South East Queensland region meetups. I'll put up a poll and find where the most people are and do that location: Sunshine Coast to Gold Coast, Brisbane to Toowoomba. Yeah, yeah, go for it. And that's the thing. So it's going to be tiny houses. I mean, Australia. they can rotate, um, depending. Yeah, we rotate in Melbourne around different. Areas, different yeah, suburbs, you now, know, north, east, south. I mean, we've done Melbourne, but that's why we're branching out to Bendigo. Well, let, you know, let's see what happens. Yeah, we've got 20 or 30 people coming, apparently. So And Geelong, yeah. We'll yeah, we'll, Geelong we'll do now. Geelong. Geelong school. Um, I'd rather do the run from Massive Rangers to Geelong rather than right to, you know, Elston or through the city at the other side. Um, 
Yeah, so lots of things happening. And, uh, but yeah, just on that, so if, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, we touch base on this pretty much any, any time we have these live events. Seminars are still a, a thing that we're planning. Yeah. Um, so with Tiny Houses... And we, and we want to run them uh, nationwide too. We don't want to just, just because it's late opportunities come up. Yes, we will have some seminars there. But the plan is to sort of go We want to have and workshops and seminars in all states at least four times with, a year. And connect with professionals in that area get their speakers to come in in that area yeah. so that the tiny house enthusiasts in those areas can also connect with those people um, and get something going on there. Yeah, so with our world, whenever you hear us talking about workshops, we're talking about hands on the tools, making stuff with the, under the guidance of a qualified builder instructor. If we talk about seminars, it's gonna become sit, watch, learn and listen in a function room with PowerPoints and demonstrations and but you're not hands on. No. Um, we're going to be doing both. And this is one of the reasons why we appointed Cart as the moderator because we have been discussing the, this with Cart for a while, running Tiny Houses Australia meetups up there, um, just because of the following you now community and. Um, because the fact is, and I haven't revealed this to anyone. I don't even think you, but we've actually got slightly more. I hate saying this. We've actually got slightly more followers in Brisbane than we do in Melbourne now. Yeah. At the moment. So there is a demand there. So we've got. I have seen the stats. Okay. Oh, it's because you're an athlete. We've got thousands of followers in Brisbane and there is a demand there. So, um, yeah, we want to be running workshops and and hopefully this land you opportunity meet your will. Love to meet you, Mum. Yeah. So this um, Bellarine Peninsula is. Where's that? Isn't that down, Jody? Isn't that sort of Geelong direction? Mm, yeah. I think it is. But anyway. So yeah, we'll do that. Oh, what Bellarine? Yeah, the Bellarine. Well, okay. Yeah, and as I was just, I'm not sure where that is. Obviously. And further to what I was saying before, as I said, if you're a builder, if you know builders or tradies that want to get involved with us and work with us, let us know. But if you've got a tiny house, or if you know someone that's got a tiny house, especially in Victoria, and you're happy for us to come and interview you and, and sort of do a tiny house tour, then we'd love to do that. But if they're not aware of us or this opportunity, let them know because there's yeah. an opportunity there for them to be land offering yeah i mean um we've only just started our youtube channel but we... hi andrew <laughs> hi andrew how you doing tell him the news he's just joined in oh andrew in a nutshell all these other people have heard um our special news in case you're wondering andrew we got approached by a here's the nutshell version we got approached by a landowner hundreds of acres he wants to have us um look after the tiny house segment of the land so there's an opportunity for people that want to live on this land that's about 45 minutes from Melbourne CBD. There's going to be opportunities for people to live on grid, off grid, build their houses. We're going to be doing workshops and seminars, running a business from the place. Uh, we're going to be on-site managers looking after the tiny house section. But the first stage we're going to roll out is uh, those living opportunities for those that are off grid. So. Uh, for those that are in Victoria looking for, where do you park it? Well, we can answer that question. Yeah. So, so that's what's going uh, on there. Yeah, Robbie, we're looking at all sorts of suppliers. Um, I think now that we've got this space, we might be able to sort of branch out and, yeah. and talk yeah. to Alex about storing some stuff. Yeah. Um, and for those of you that don't know who Andrew Carter is, Andrew is one of the partners of the Tiny House Company in Brisbane. Yeah. And Andrew, we do plan on getting up to Brisbane to meet you and Lara and Charlie. Uh, and uh, We just can't seem to get away from Victoria. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's just life and jobs and money and stuff. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we do want to get up there and interview you guys. Um, we are going to speak to Cart because we want to do the Facebook Live, we want to do the YouTube Live, we want to do it on a decent quality video like this. Hopefully this you're seeing what we're seeing. And um, we want to get these interviews going. Have we organised a meet up in July on the first Sunday? Have we already promoted that? It's already booked in. The time slots for the rest of the year are booked in. We just haven't pinpointed but July, the location. Have we pinpoint, point no, we haven't chosen maybe a Maybe we can do July in July. We can do. Geelong in July. It's not like, like Christmas in July. Um, so we can do that. Uh, but yeah, so we'd love to get up to, to Brisbane. When we do make the trip up to Brisbane, Andrew, we want to interview you. We want to interview other people around. So I'm sure you know people with tiny houses in Brisbane. Uh, what we'd also like to do, if you're open to it, Andrew, is maybe organise a time we can, when we get well, the technology sorted out. Well, that's you. Sort of you out. announce that here in front of everyone. Yeah, but we can, you know. He, we, might, well, he might not want to talk to you. You put me in my spot. Maybe, yeah, maybe 
Don't tell me a bit of a tie. Maybe he doesn't like me. <laughs> You're an idiot. Anyway. But yeah, we're going to be hooking up uh, with international guests. I know we keep saying this, but we just got to work out how to do that. We want to do it. We don't want to look like a bit of a twat doing it. We don't. There's no point doing an, in, with an interview with an international guest and have the video just absolutely woeful. He'd be keen. Good stuff. Um, um, so Jody's asking a question about everyone seems to be looking for space. Anyone have any ideas of a rough cost to set up a small tiny house park? Um, what, ma what the majority of people are doing, are just they're just doing it. And to be honest, with this opportunity that we're offering, the landowner has said, well, just do it. If there's a problem with the council, we'll deal with it down the track. Um, so most people that are doing the whole tiny house thing at the moment, they're just doing it. They're making a cash in hand uh, because it's You've not... You've got to be a bit of a trailblazer yeah. um, to get out there and do it now. One person stands. that that we know of in Australia that has gotten the tick of approval from the council is Andrew. Um, and hopefully that's all sort of eased off and, and you're all good now, Andrew, and big tick from the council. But unfortunately, not every council in Australia is um, is open to people living in caravans, which is essentially what these are, self-built caravans. And I've been telling people all over the country that um, when, when people want to... Some people want to just say, bugger, I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm not hurting the environment. Yes, and, I thought uh, that was a typo, Brian. Um, yeah, we'll do a road trip. We, we're going to have to set out blocks where we can get away. And, yeah. and, and we're happy to go into state trip. to do a road trip as long as we can see, do at least like five interviews, five it doesn't visits. doesn't have to be five. I'm, ha I'm happy to do two and have a bit of a holiday. I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so people either want to just say, well, bugger, I'm not to hurt the environment. I'm going to just do it. And I'll deal with it kind of like what our attitude. If, if we get hassles of the council, we'll deal with it there. Hey, we're on trailer, we're on a trailer on wheels. Worst case scenario, we'll just move it somewhere else. Um, Got to go. We're off for the weekend. Thanks for sharing the good news. Have a great night, all. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Thanks for joining but the, in. But for the people that want that tick of approval from the council, that's totally up to you guys. But approaching your local council with, this is what I'd like to do, this is my plan, this is my tiny house. That, don't don't go in. Don't that don't give a, your identity up. Yeah. Ring them anonymously Do an and ask calls. the questions over the phone. I, I just think it may be a can of worms that you may not want to open, depending on your council. Some uh, councils. In saying are, that, though, anyone who does ring their local council and they're open to it, let the community know, because then you might drum yeah. up some interest and have that extra support, and then we'll know if anyone asks. Who's who's tiny house friendly and who's not? Yeah. So. I mean, look, there's a caravan park, and I'm not I'm not bagging the guy. On it. I'm sure it's a caravan, park. it's a traditional caravan park. But in Aladala, down the road from Granted, there's on a Tiny it'll suit, Homes. It'll suit some people. It won't suit everyone. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a traditional. A start. Yeah, it's a traditional caravan park. It does have beachfront access. You can walk off to the beach in Aladala, but it's a traditional caravan park, and he's got sites available for $150 a week. Um, ocean views, though. It's not ocean views, but you can walk down a little path onto the. Yeah. It does. There's no. You don't have to deal with any roads or anything. You can walk to the beach. Hundred and fifty dollars a session. Uh, a session uh, per spot. And I said to I, I spoke to him and I said, "How big are the sites? Oh, seven. You know, nine meters by five meters. So it's going to be like a freaking car park, you know. Whereas what we're offering, well, essentially for the same price, is you've got a like potentially an acre or more each, a couple of acres each. Um, so lots of options. But, um, I'm just reading the comments. Okay. Any lobbying underway at Vic's state level for the off-grid living? Uh, not really at the moment, Graham. One of the things we're planning, along with Lisa's, our personal tiny house build, um, some of you may have heard, we're also planning a Tiny Houses Australia display house which is designed well, from the ground up to there, be under three and a half tons. There is an interest. We are speaking to a couple of people about um, having some sort of... Uh, a forum? Call, like a forum yeah. to try and get some sort of lobbying happening. Yeah. So we um, might the idea behind that is we might do like a, an information night, like a, sem a mini seminar, but as part of the mm -hmm. seminar, there'll be in, you know, guest speakers. I'll talk about you know, the ins and outs of trailers. We'll get a builder in to talk about the ins and outs of... The options for building steel, timber, advantages, disadvantages. Um, but we also want to have part of that as an open forum where we invite people from councils, yeah. you know, city planners, 
and say, right, this is what the tiny house movement is all about. This is what a typical tiny house may look like. Um, you know, is environmentally friendly and sustainable. What would be, you know, for your council or your council, ask your list with questions, what would be the issues that you guys would have with seeing something like this in your municipality? Mm. So that's in the plans as well. Um, with everything that's happened in the last few days, we want to kind of get this up and running first. But when we get our display house done... Well, not necessarily first. I mean, we can... Yeah. Winter's a bit slow. Things are slowing down. Yeah. We might be able to sort of pull something together and... Yeah, but when we get this display know, house, we can well, Tom, take that to the masses. Tom is a regular guy that um, comes to... Well, he's a regular... He is a regular guy. <laughs> but he's... <laughs> He's a guy who attends our meetups regularly, is yeah, what I'm trying to say. As well. Which is why I'm not going on radio in the morning. Uh, well, so, yeah, yeah he wants to. Well. Yeah, but Tom wants to put something together. So, we're going to set a date, find a venue, book yeah. that venue, and then get something going. So, yeah, so we'll do that because I want to. I mean, I've spoken to at different home shows and different things, but I've presented on stage, you know, Sydney and Melbourne last year, and even this year. Um, I've had people come up to me and say, oh, I work for such and such council. I'm in the city planning department. I go, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and they said, look, we love the whole idea. And, and the general feel that everyone has said to me, including people within this group that have made, that commented on this over the last couple of years, is that, and I've said this before, councils are too busy. They, we don't want to deal with all this. We don't want to know. They don't want to know. They don't if care. If there's a complaint... We'll get involved. They're obliged to get involved. They're so. obliged to get involved, and they'll and they'll see if there's any codes that are being. But they're not out to broken. get you. They're, they're really um, not out to get you. And as I said, even though Andrew's gone, uh, Andrew Carter from the tiny house company, from what I understand, the neighbours complain. Oh, there's an illegal development going on. The council got involved. They said, well, no, it's on wheels. It's essentially a caravan, and in his particular area in Brisbane, you're legally allowed. To, someone is illegally allowed to live full time oh, okay. in a caravan Were in you the backyard. At the talk, Robbie? In the backyard no, of an I existing house. No, you see. So an unrelated person can live full time in a caravan in the backyard of an existing house where Andrew happens to be in Brisbane, suburban Brisbane, from what I understand. Is that the same case with every council in Australia? No. If it was, happy days. Uh, but the council got involved. They said it's a caravan. Tick. Um, that's legal. Is it an eyesore? No. It's a stunning design for those of you that have seen it. Um, is it an environmental hazard? No. They looked at how they were handling their their grey water, their black water, their human waste, tick, tick, tick. Yep, they're legal. So, happy days. Um, um, so, okay, so Russell, uh, Russell, I don't know why I keep saying Russell. Robbie was at the sustainability... Just better call him Robbo. 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 <laughs> Robbie, yeah. Uh, he was at the Sustainable Living Expo. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so we, did, we did film that one, but the, film, the camera uh, work was a bit dodgy. Oh, I'm going to put it together still. Yeah, we'll put a little thing. Um, but, and um, what's Bill what saying? I'm glad to see the movement is moving. I have been advocating for tiny houses for years now. I have two on acres uh, with solar and another at the beach. In Glennis, are you, are you able to? Are you willing to reveal what state you're in? Are you in Victoria? Uh, and if so, well, otherwise you can PM us and let us know where you are. If you are in Victoria, if you're open to it, we'd love to come out and meet you and, and do an interview with you guys. We never reveal where, where people are either, so... Yeah, so all we would reveal is like, oh, this is Sarah from somewhere in Victoria, or we can change your name, or you don't even have to appear. We've got one lady that we're going to be interviewing, um, in fact, a guy that we're going to be interviewing in Victoria, where he doesn't actually want to be in the video at all, so mm -hmm. we're going to, he's going to give us the lowdown on his house, and we're going uh, to... In New South Wales. Yeah, we'll be That's all right, that's doable. We can do that. Yeah. Are, tour? No, no. are you aware of... Um, Grant's Open Day in Ulladulla. Um, what, what did we say it was? 10th of June. It's technically Burrell Lake, which is like five minutes down the road from Ulladulla. Yeah. Um, yeah. 875 kilometres from our house. That's just invisible. We left at 5pm. We're about to upload the, the vlog that she put together. Oh, we're uploading it overnight, so it'll be up there in the morning if you want to watch us going for a drive. I don't know why she... <laughs> I, I said, no one wants to see me going to get coffee and going through McDonald's drive through. That's a vlog. That's what vlogs are. And signs, you know, on the freeway. But anyway, <laughs> that's that's our creative project. So It um, helps me get the hang of editing. Yeah, as you do. Though, we left Melbourne at 5 p.m. This is when we drove up to the Sydney Home Show. We left Melbourne at 5 p.m. We got to um, Gundagai midnight because we stopped a couple of times. And then and then we ended up, left the next morning, got to Aladala 
ground space about mid afternoon. Two or three. Or I think we kept we kept him waiting. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, longer um, drive than we expected. Dropping a few drive to Aladella. So you must be very close to Aladella. I wish we knew about when this. That's when okay. Was, we knew that it was going to be a quick trip there yeah. and back. And, but the next other, time we go up there, we do want to. Yeah. The other option, and this it was actually an idea that we got from Deek. Um, Deek, if you ever see this, we're going to nick your idea. Uh, if any of you guys would like to be on our YouTube Daddy channel Daddy. and you want to show off your tiny house, you guys are welcome to do your own videos, sort of a video, video walkthrough of your tiny house. And we can work with you on how to upload it online and we can get the video to us. And we'd love to put that up on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, we'd love to interview any of, you that, any of you guys that are building or uh, whether you're still in the process or you've finished a tiny house. We'd love to connect up with you online as, as a, um, a live interview, live or pre-recorded interview. <laughs> Jodie, we don't have the tiny house. We're yet to build our tiny house. We've just got the trailer, but no, there's no way I'd go through a drive through I'm not going to be towing it myself, that's for sure. No, <laughs> um, she barely trusted me with the empty trailer, but um, you guys would do very well creating a tiny house Australia app, big projects. Yeah, we've got the website. Um, I'm doing the website ourselves. We're it's, doing everything ourselves. It's like, oh. I know. But, um, yeah, we're thinking an app here, maybe down the track. Um, you know, I think maybe Frisbee's This first. is why I can't come on board. We, we are going to extend and, and hopefully yeah. we want to do things pull in people to help. Yeah, and, we want to do things properly. Hence, you know, things like, no, we're going to do Facebook Live rather than YouTube Live because we don't want to have rubbish video. If it's rubbish video, you guys won't hang around. Um, we want to do workshops. We want to do workshops properly with qualified builders that have got insurances in place. Uh, why? Why what? Why are we doing it? Uh, well, because I'm all about the money. <laughs> no, but the apparently reason, no, but what the reason why we do this on a daily basis, day in day out, and you for the last four years mm. is just because of pure passion for the movement. Yeah, and we want to create excitement around the movement yeah. and encourage people and it, look you know, it's, for me it's the same reason we want to see the movement grow as yeah. well but we want to see it grow in a positive way with which hence the rules we've got yeah. but it's the same reason why i left my corporate job at the national australia bank in 1999 to be a personal trainer mm -hmm. because i wanted to help people help change people's lives mm -hmm. i think you've already done no, not yet. Um, but yeah, there's the potential there. So, did you ask the question today in the group that I asked? Maybe? No, what what question was that? Oh, what I asked Darren, I think it, well, he is busy. I could have done it myself. Mm -hmm. um, what was his question? Like while you're on screen, I've been adding new members. Oh, Thanks, thank Kat. You, Kat. Just make sure they're not flat. Like from Bangladesh, and they just joined Facebook last Tuesday, and they're already in two hundred and fifty-three groups. You know that. Anyway, as long as he's not there, delete, delete, delete. Oh yeah, Abby is a moderator. Gone, gone, gone. <laughs> We're watching the numbers. We're watching you. Right? Um, what's the question you wanted to ask the? Bases? I just wanted to know those who are here with us now, who's been following Tiny Houses Australia specifically, has the group or the page helped you in any way? Has it encouraged you? Um, even if it's not through us personally, maybe there's someone and another member that's helped encourage you. Like, has it been help? That's that's what I want to know. Yeah, I know personally when I joined, it was I a, it has a been massive because of, help for me. Yeah, um, and I'll be forever grateful for discovering it. So, and that was before there was I'm any grateful. other groups. <laughs> that uh, that was before there was other groups. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hope it's a bit of, of value to people because I mean, yeah. I've spent you know, six thousand hours or more of my life unpaid doing this, um, and if I was doing it for the money, it would be it would have been a shit decision to do it because <laughs> I'd, like We're not making money. three cents an hour or something work it out. But yeah, I'm not doing it for the money. Uh, yes, obviously we are trying to develop an ethical professional business out of this, uh, and we've said this before. A lot of the, Some the stuff. Piling. That, a lot of the stuff that Tiny Houses Australia will do will always be free. Our content, our Facebook, Thanks, YouTube Robbie. content will always be free. Uh, our meetups will always be free, social events. But there is going to be some Information about aspects. our trailers will be free. Yeah, we don't charge for information about trailers. Um, <laughs> if you want information about trailers, come and get a trailer. Interestingly, and I'm not 
doing a blatant plug for our trailers here. Ask us anything about the trailers. I'm not doing a blatant <laughs> plug for the trailers here, but one of our, as I said, three of our trailer cl- clients at the moment are coming from New South Wales, driving down to get one of our trailers. One of our customers got about ten quotes from around New South Wales and Southeast Queensland. She was quoted by one company sixteen thousand dollars for the trailer that we're charging her eight and a half for. So that's why I say do your due diligence. I'm not saying you have to get your trailer through us, but make sure I encourage you to get a quote from us. Um, but do your due Thanks, diligence. Vicky. Do your due diligence. Make sure you ask them how many trailers have you done. And this goes for builders as well. How many trailers have you done? Can I speak to clients that you've that have, you've done trailers for? Is there photos, videos of your trailers? You know, Ashton, I don't know what you're doing tomorrow morning, but at 8.30, Darren's going to be interviewed on ABC Radio, and they're talking about just that thing, so yeah, about the housing affordability and all the housing crisis. Yeah, it was interesting. The producer rang me today. She said, no, we just need to get things clear. This is not really focused on you advertising your business. I said, it's, it never oh, is. she ring today? No, oh, that was yesterday. yesterday. But I said, look, that's... Anytime I speak on radio or on stage, it's never it's about us. It's always about the movement. It's all about spreading the word about what tiny houses are and why they've captured our imagination and why so many people are looking at them as a valid option. So, yeah. Uh, it's been great to hear there are so many people like minded. Excellent. Thank you, Vicky. Um, yeah, and look, as I said, a recent addition to our Facebook page is our reviews section down the tab. So if any of you feel that you want to leave some positive comments or, or I, I know we're going honest to get, comments. We're, we're probably going to get some bad reviews, but that's okay. Only for the people that we kicked out the group. <laughs> because it's a public, it's, there's reviews on the Facebook page, which is public, so any idiot can go in there and give bad reviews. So if you yeah. like what we're trying to do, we'd love if you could give us some, some feedback on our reviews tab over on our Facebook page. Um, but no, that'd be great. So, Rebecca Carney, yeah. we moved into our tiny because always loved it. Excellent. Yeah. And Rebecca, you're another one. We'd love to come up. I know you're in New South Wales, Queensland somewhere. Uh, we'd love to come up at some stage. And, Hi, Mum. And <laughs> to, Hello. Um, Mum's just joined in. <laughs> Hi, Mum. <laughs> Mum's at uh, Christine Bruce. Say hello to Mum. Hi, Mum. <laughs> well, it's not Mum yet. Well, you haven't asked the question. Here we go. <laughs> you're still working it out. <laughs> Anyway, oh, now mum's watching. Uh, <laughs> hey, mum. So, yeah, we told mum about the uh, the news this afternoon, about the opportunity that's been handed to us on a platter. So uh, it's all very exciting. But um, I don't have a professional tiny house builder that does not want to show you what they have done. Oh, I don't know a professional. That's the thing. So if you've got a tiny house, if, if someone's saying, I'm a tiny house trailer manufacturer or I'm a tiny house builder, well... Now, I know that there's a couple of builders that I've spoken to recently that have established qualified builders in their own right, and they're just starting their tiny house build. So I'm not expecting that every tiny house builder has done 37 tiny houses, but at least do the due diligence <laughs> to see. Um... Mum's a fabulous artist. If anyone wants any work done, <laughs> realistic. There we go. Um, so, yeah. Do I can't you... check out, was it? What's, what's it called, Mum? Don't you know your mother's Facebook page? No, no, not her Facebook page. No, it's under her, ma- her name, honey. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the... the TV show? Yeah. The YouTube. We'll, well, we'll put the link up in the comments just to make them feel awkward. Mum, just say what what it's on. See, Christine, I'm doing all right. Well, I've got her on live, live on the internet. So the next step is get her up on stage at the home no. shows. No, um, I can do this. I can't do live. Yeah. I mean, this is live, but I can't. You know, the difference is... I can't see their faces staring back at me. And you don't get the people getting up and going, oh, fuck this, you're like walking off. Um, you get the other person like that. But yes, I'm just saying, do your due diligence. Whether you're, getting, whether you're getting a trailer or whether you're getting a, a tiny house built, ask people, have you got references? How many tiny houses have you done? Um, have you got clients that I can... I mean, if anyone wants to speak to any of our trailer clients, message me, I'll put you on to half a dozen. Um... You know, Mum, so. don't be shy. Tell them the TV show. Don't put your mother on the spot. Colour in Your Life on YouTube. Go check it out. Colour in Your Life. There we go. Um, yeah. So, welcome aboard, Mum. This is what we do on a Friday night with a glass of wine. and <laughs> A glass. Oh, you yeah. want to top up? Yeah, I'll do that. So, yeah. So much for our half-hour sessions. We're, so at, we're at Sonia's, Mum. An hour and a half. Yeah, we're at Sonia's place. We're at my sister's house. <laughs> After this, I'm going to blow up a inflatable mattress and we're going to sleep on the living room floor. 
So that's the news from us, you guys. A huge opportunity for those of you that are looking in Victoria and the northwestern area of Melbourne uh, for a place to park your tiny house. We can now answer that question. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's just the beginning. And, and that's just because this one guy had a generous offer. Yeah. He sees the potential in the tiny house uh, community and the movement. Um, and that might spur on other landowners to do the same thing across the country. So Yeah. Well, there's another project that I won't reveal that I'm, I'm speaking to the owner of another business that is involved in landowners. And we're talking to them about how we can get involved with them. So um, I will. Vicky dibbles a bit as well. Dibbles a bit in oh, art, I guess. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. Go check out Mum's art page under Christine Bruson. Yeah. Christine, Sonia and Paul are not home yet. We just we just got the key. If we'll they were here, I'd get them to say hello. We let ourselves in. We're just eating their food. And making no, ourselves. we're not. We're drinking our own wine. Yeah, we we bought our own wine glasses. Yeah. Christine, get Sonia some wine glasses. <laughs> No, I will. I've, I've got to get her a Rebecca thing. Yeah. So um, that's, that's our news. That's the new, That's the week that was. And, and the weekend ahead is um, ABC Radio interview tomorrow morning off to Mount Buller. Sit by the fire with some wine and uh, check out Carl's place. Yeah. Um, and then Bendigo next weekend. Yeah, we're going to connect up with hopefully more people in Bendigo. Um, and quite possibly, I, forgive me, I can't remember who it was that suggested Geelong. Yeah, well, let's do okay, let's do Geelong. We've been doing Melbourne Geelong venues July. for the last eighteen months, so let's do Geelong yeah. in July. That kind of has a ring to it. Yeah. Um, maybe we should only do venues that rhyme with the name of the month. I don't know what rhymes with August, but anyway. So yeah, that's us. And um, so, yeah, so this is what we do on a Friday night. Not always here, sometimes at home. Um, but this is a much easier setup, just with the laptop and it the, was definitely worth the it microphone. tonight. Sometimes I don't know what we're going to be talking about, but tonight's... I thought you were going to say sometimes I don't know why I bother. <laughs> that too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we had to, a, a special news for tonight and I was, we were happy to share it with you guys. Yeah, as I said, this Bye. is just a chance for us to share any news. Um, everything's going on video. Hopefully you guys get a kick out of seeing us live. Um, and it gives you guys an opportunity to ask questions. Red and wine. hopefully when it's cold, white wine when it's hot, but I, I enjoy a beer as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, it's only in moderation on a Friday night on a weekend. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a coffee drinker. <laughs> Coffee's my... A bit, yeah. My, Are we about to hit the gym again? Well... I want to get my abs back, so we're going to... Yeah. Oh, maybe okay. we should just put it out there to the group and that way... Like, like, hold ourselves accountable. Hold ourselves accountable. accountable. Um, yeah, we want to get back to being fit, so that's the other thing we're going to be working on. But that's yeah. that's that's not about tiny houses. I, I used to tell my daughter. It's, it's part of the lifestyle, I guess. Yeah, but... my daughter's twelve. Emily's twelve, and Mitchell's fifteen now. And I said, I used to be a personal trainer. I used to add abs. Bullshit, Dad. No, you didn't. And so yeah, personal trainer. I've been dating him for what two years. I'm still waiting. Where's the training start? Anyway, so. Do what I need to know about that. No um, worries, Thanks for having a great night. Yeah. Thanks for joining um, in again. You guys have a time. Rebecca, we did. Um, what made you passionate about it? Rebecca, good question. I have been wanting to build a tiny house for the last you know, four years, uh, just through life and personal situations, haven't had the financial ability to jump in and do it. And then when I was getting close to having the financial ability, I met this one, and then we're like, okay, what's going to go on here? Um, we did live in a vintage, 15 foot vintage caravan for 12 months in Melbourne mm -hmm. as a bit of an experiment to see if we could live tiny and not want to kill each mm -hmm. other. Looks like we'll be moving back into it. Yeah. I'm actually excited about Oh that. God, it's like again. sentimental. Well, oh, I loved it. Yeah, I know. Anyway. At least we'll have some, some storage um, space and stuff. But yes, we're planning so our tiny house, Rebecca. Um, Lisa's tiny house is coming first. And I say Lisa's tiny house because she already had hers largely planned when oh, we met. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Because you were single. No. <laughs> and you didn't want to have to re rely on any of those man bastards again. No. Wasn't that it? Really? No. Um, what was I, the pa well, I was looking at vintage caravans to begin with because I was... Um, Thanks, Jody. I was looking at the future and it was a bit... You know, gloom and glum, gloom, gloom. See, I can't be on radio. It was gloom. It was gloomy. Gloomy. Glum. Glum. <laughs> Glummy. Anyway. Um, 
so I thought, what do I do? You know, rent's just getting more and more excessive and trying to make ends meet was getting harder and harder as a single person. And I had an 18-year-old 18, 18 son, he's now 22. So, yeah, I had to sort of think of another way to keep a roof over my head. So yeah. I started looking to the caravans and then I that's how I stumbled across tiny houses and... The more I looked into tiny houses, the more they just made sense and they, they just ticked all the boxes. Um, and then what did you do with it, John? Why? And then I thought, if I'm really going to do this, I was fortunate enough. Mum, I ended up going back to Mum's for uh, about a year and a half. I worked, was working a couple of jobs, so I was able to save some money. And, it, and I remembered, I'm like, oh, that's right, tiny houses. And I looked up tiny houses online and bang, tiny houses Australia came up. And your wife has never been the same since. Yeah, and the reason I was looking for it was probably like you guys. Well, I need to arm myself with information. Is it doable? Can I do it here in Australia? So, yeah. and... Yes, we can. Yeah, I think we've all sort of... Yeah. And that was the thing. When I started, and a lot of people have heard the story before, but I wanted, I thought, surely I'm not the only person for whom this makes sense. Surely other people... I'm not stupid. I'm not logical, irrational. This makes a lot of sense, and surely it can't be just me. Um, and clearly, it's not. So, yeah. but any other news? I think that's about it. So this is the week that we're. Uh, typically, you're looking at a tow truck, or if you can keep it under three and a half ton or three three hundred three thousand three thousand five hundred kilograms, kilograms yeah. you're looking at a um, like. Yeah, like a double cab. You, if you, yeah. all of our trail. I mean, our pers personally, our trailers that we make have all got electric brakes. Anything over seven hundred and fifty kilograms, you're going to need electric brakes anyway. So uh, you need a vehicle with electric brakes. But if you can keep the the whole thing trailer plus house under three and a half thousand kilograms, then you can tow with a Dedigra big double cab. You, if you go over three and a half, up to four and a half, then you're going to need like a Chevy Silverado, Dodge Ram, Ford F three fifty, and something like that which realistically is a tow truck. Uh, I was speaking to a trailer manufacturer in Queensland. And he said, I've got a big Ford thing that can tow 10 tonne. Yeah. Long yeah. before I knew, you know, what could tow it, I was never planning on towing mine because I just didn't have the nerve to. Yeah. I'd be too nervous. Um, and I remember early, in the early days when I started to um, wrap my brain around all the... Um, ins and outs of tiny houses, like the measurements, the requirements you need to stay within. And I knew the first thing I needed to find was a trailer. Yeah. And I needed to know about the trailers and what the weight limits were and where was I going to get one. Because until then, I'm not going to be able to start. So yeah. in the meantime, I started to dream and put together my plan, put together my design, uh, created the scale model that I did. Um, Caught my eye. Yeah. It just kept that dream alive, and then that's why I created my own page, My Tiny Dream. Does that mean that Dan Peckett from Tiny House Customs actually brought us together because he gave you the idea? Yeah, to do he that. did. I was watching um, Dan Peckett from Tiny Customs, Tiny House Customs Tiny on House YouTube. Customs. I was watching his YouTube channel, and this was before he began his tiny house build, and he was doing scaled models with that foam polystyrene yeah. sheets, yeah, thin polystyrene sheets. And he said, uh, "This is phone a good call, idea. isn't it? Phone call." Well, that's what they call it at the stage. Yeah. So I'm like, "Oh, that's so cool." But you know, I, of course, I wanted to use balsa so wood. So we're actually going to. Dan's one of the first people. We're going to hook up with Deke uh, for an interview. Um, Cart, we need to work out this live, reasonable quality video interview situation. Uh, but yeah, we want to interview Dan. Is one of the first people we want to. We want to interview. Um... <laughs> Mum. <laughs> he can be impressive. Aha, uh -huh. see, so your mother likes me. <laughs> Mum, don't, his head's going to expand. Your dad likes me, your mum likes me. Does your sister and brother like me? Yes, honey. Okay. Anyway, so. Um, likes you. Yeah, I do my best, Christine. Um, <laughs> she has her moments. Um, you do too. Yeah, but no, Pat, uh, Dan Paquette, uh, if he ever watches this, he's, he's responsible for bringing us together. So we're going to get him uh, online for an interview. And I actually, shh, nothing's confirmed yet, but we've also, we've spoken to him about two years ago about getting him out for an international Yeah, we've spoken to house, a number of people to come out. Hands-on building 
workshop. They'd be excited to come out and do workshops. So that's yeah. not going to be an issue. It's just a matter of planning it and timing it. Yeah, we said, you know, we'll fly you out, give you it. Aussie beer, you can cuddle a koala, stay at our place, have a barbecue. This is actually, like, we we're going to do a 45 minute one tonight, but I think we've been able to chat for a bit longer tonight. Well, it's like an hour 39. Yeah. People have, there's still 15 hanging on. Thanks um, for joining in. Um, Glennis? Is it Glennis? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the news that we've got. And um, it was a bit of a longer one tonight because we had a bit more news to talk about. But um, as I said, stay tuned. We're heading up to Mount Buller tomorrow to do an interview with Carl. That'll be uploaded eventually. Um, and the He's having a, a slight dig at me. I've got a lot of editing to do. It it's, takes time and I'm getting my head around it. So Yeah. So um, I do enjoy it. It's a, it's a creative process. And... We'll do that. Um, I chatted to Bryce from Living Big in a Tiny House um, this afternoon. Wow. You well, sent I, him a message. I sent him a message. I haven't checked that out of him. I'm sure he sent a message back. He's busy. Uh, but he's gallivanting. He's, makes, he's making money. Go check out his latest video. It's got a roof. Um, he's roof gallivanting around the States because he's making way too much money now on YouTube. So he's gallivanting around the States doing rooftop deck, tiny house to tours. And he's, he's meeting some very... Uh, Interesting people in the States. Yeah, so what's his channel? Living, Living Big in a Tiny House. Tiny house. Yeah. So he's on YouTube, pretty easy to find. He's got like 380,000 subscribers. But I really, I really like We've got that, about 12. the house that he went and saw out in... Um, in the desert in Nevada. Nevada, yeah. yeah. And speaking of desert houses, I know we plug them a lot, but it's worthwhile. If you haven't, if you're interested in the tiny house off-grid lifestyle, connect up with Derek and Hannah. Uh, Derek is on YouTube at Life Inside a Box. I think I'm just a little bit obsessed with their channels. <laughs> I'm actually learning a lot through them yeah. in terms of editing and stuff. So. Well, we're going to interview them as well, and, and you want to send them a hat. You want to send everyone hats. Yeah, I do. We're going to give Carl a hat tomorrow and six pack of beers. Yeah, why not? So, anyway, anyway we're probably we're rambling now, guys. So yeah. We'll let you go, go. We'll let you go. Yeah. See, not not going on the radio. Not not going to happen. There we go. Uh, so yeah, this has been us, and this has been another video. You guys should check out Zilvado's. Yeah, yeah, we do. We watch him as well. Yeah, Abel does a lot of really good work. He's, a, um, he's an artist. I've connected up with him on Facebook. I haven't had much to do. With, I haven't had many messages, uh, but we'd love to. Hopefully try and get him out, or at the very least get an interview with him. Um, my wish list is, I, I'm working, I've recently connected up with Zach Giffen, the well, host yes, of Tiny Well, yes, we House didn't Nation. know you had one and, or two, and we know there's quite a lot of um, tiny houses out there that we're not aware of, because yeah. they simply don't have a, a page, and they're doing it under the radar. And... Yeah. Look, I don't know if Jack's still floating around there, but we met Jack at the, there's about 100 tiny house builds that we know of, probably 103 now with Glynis. There's about 100 build, builds that we know of, and that's just the ones that have said, hi, I'm on Facebook, here's my blog, follow me on Instagram. Um, we met Jack in Sydney, and he said, oh, I'm a builder. And I said, oh, so are you, are you looking at building a tiny house, Jack? He said, mate, I've built about eight. I'm like, Jesus, yeah, why yeah, do I so, not know about so this? So they're around. So they're all over the place. We just connected up with another builder here in Melbourne recently, and he and four mates are starting up a tiny house building business, and we're going to be going to interview them. Yeah. They've already done one for a, a client, so he's, he's going to put me in touch with their client so we can go and tour yeah. their place. Yeah. So they're popping up all over the place. Um, but yeah. It, yeah, If you can feel it, I can feel it. It's about to take off here like it has everywhere else. So. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what you're, where you're going there. <laughs> anyway. anyway. So if you want to see more of this, whatever the hell this is, um, we're here every Friday night uh, unless we are not unless we're not here but anyway uh, unless we're at a location which doesn't have wi-fi or internet um but we'll let you know but yeah same channel next friday by next friday we would have been and gone to uh carl's tiny house up at uh, at an undisclosed location yeah. so we'll yeah. have a bit of an insight there and, and our interview with carl will be up and running yeah. by then yeah but we're uploading again this one that i have worked on this your week. vlog the vlog check yeah. the vlog out and let us know what you think because there's another three or four of those coming because it was, it's a... Just don't make me look like a... It was like a four-day trip, so I'm doing the vlog a day. Yeah, so. just don't make me look like too much of a twat. Oh, I'm in it too. Yeah, so. that's true. All right, so this is us. This has been another video. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. I hope and you are as excited as we are about the news. And yeah, and spread the word. We'll, um, we'll put more details out, obviously. We just <laughs> a special announcement. Um, 
but yeah, we're going to put a, a proper de- a proper post out with all the details. Mum, listening addresses. to the ABC radio at eight thirty in the morning. Darren's going to be on live for half an hour. And so will Lisa. No, I'm not talking. No, you're going to be filming. I'll be filming. I'll be filming. filming. Yeah. <laughs> so um, live radio, so I have to watch what I'm saying. But um, oh, I'm not a letter. He interrupts me so often. <coughs> so yeah, so lots going on. But yeah, if you're interested in that land offer, um, 150 bucks a, a week which is when people do fully understand what's on the property and what's going to be available, it's mind-blowing. That's a ridiculous price. So um, let us know. Reach out, info at tinyhousesaustralia.com. If you are interested or if you've got any questions, hit us up on Facebook. Um, yeah. If you haven't done so already, even though this is If you want a T-shirt, on... put in an order. We'll organise it. <laughs> yeah, $25 for a T-shirt or polo shirt. Let us know your size nice and easy, and we can make that happen. Um, and if you, even though this is on Facebook, if you haven't subscribed yet, do us a favour, go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe, and we will download this video and we'll upload it to. Obviously, you YouTube. know when this um, what do you call it? Land, what opportunity? What are you talking about? Yeah, um, the tiny house community. Yeah. I guess when when that'll starts kicking off, obviously we'll be recording that, so that'll be an interesting. Yeah, but there's going to be we're we're going to be opening it up See? to. Interrupted. Go on. No, because no, no, it's like a, I'm like a fish. I forget. I know. I always say that. But yeah, we're going to be opening it up to not only people that want to build, but tiny house build. If people want to start up a tiny house building company, they want to build on the, on the premises. That's an option as well. So lots of things going on. Uh, if you've got a tiny. <laughs> yes, and also great news at Cart. A very handsome Cart. As our new moderator. <laughs> That'd be right. Um, don't trust him. He can be an utter bastard, of course. But well, that's why it's called the nasty bastard on YouTube. Yeah, that's it. So I reckon this is probably going to be the only tiny house set up in Australia where you can bring your horse and you can have your tiny house. And you have no, your I reckon it's going to set off more. Of course, it will. I think it's going to set off a chain reaction, which I'm hoping it will. Well, you think John Farnham's going to go and do it? <laughs> he's, I'm sure he's got land. He's got money. Um, anyway, so yeah. Ben Dodd joined. Anyway, ben, welcome, welcome, Ben. As we're about to sign we're off, we're about to sign off. We're get, it's going to stay up, so you can go back and rewatch it and see what the big news was. Is you're, you're an hour, you're an hour forty seven late, Ben, but that's all right. Um, we're going to go. We're going to get some work done before we hit the bed. Well, hit the hang. I'm going to make the bed before we can go to bed. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll be back the same time next week, eight o'clock um, till whenever. Um, Hopefully, with some more news. You just never know. We weren't expecting this news at all last week. Yeah. And you just never know what's around the corner, guys. Hopefully, in the next week. Actually, I want to make that a goal. In the next week, we will liaise with moderator Cart to get this whole thing sorted out with, so we can do an interview because if we can get this sound quality and this audio quality and we can do an interview, then we shall do an interview with yeah. people yeah. because we, you guys are going to get sick of our mugs, but we want to... Yeah, we want to have more, more interesting content than... Just <coughs> oh, I'm interesting, but we want to find out. You guys know my, our story. Um, so we'll, we want to interview people, international people and just regular people like... Thanks, Vicky. Good night. And all right, good night, you guys. We're going to hit the big red button and we'll see uh, everyone next week. Yeah, see you soon. Cheers, people. Cheers. See ya.